Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you um, a brand new set of pencils that was sent to me by a lovely, lovely person called Gemma, who I chat to on Instagram sometimes. And she's had a really, really hard time. And my heart goes out to you, Gemma. So this video is for you. And she's, she sent me these saying that I was, I'd given her a reason to get up in the morning. I'm getting a bit choked up. So, pull myself together. Um, so let's unbox these together, okay? Sorry, you know what I get like. So this is how they came. Obviously they came um, in a box from Amazon, um, but they were inside this box. Now, for those of you that have followed my channel for a long time, will know when I did my pencil collection that I did have the Castle Art 120 set from before. And um, they only had the colour numbers on them and nothing else was on them. And um, I have, do you remember me talking about one of my students that was very good at art? Well, I um, I let her use them and she adores them. So I put them back on my wish list with the new upgraded version that have names and numbers on so that we can use them on the channel in our budget pencil series. So I will link these down below in the description box. So if you want to grab a set when you've seen what they look like, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not an Amazon affiliate. I will only um, post links to stuff that um, I truly enjoy using or that we're going to use on the channel. So this is the, the box, a lovely tin presentation box. And the artwork is gorgeous on the front. You've got an array of the colours that are going to be contained inside on the front of the box and if I gently turn it over let's have a look at the map <clears throat> so we've got 120 premium soft touch color pencils now if the formula hasn't changed these were the first decent set of pencils that I brought when I was learning to color and I really enjoyed using them so the back says that this is a deluxe set of 120 premium soft touch colored pen pencils has silky smooth velvety soft leads with a large crayon of permanent colour with light fast qualities. Now, I can't vouch for that. I don't know. If anybody out there has, let me just move my, I've brought a new light um, and it's clashing with the box. Um, if anybody out there has had a picture on the wall that they've done with Castle Art, and, um, let me know if it's faded or if it's if it's done okay. Um, it says the non-toxic pencils have been named, numbered, and colour coded for instant recognition. The tactile soft finish and quality wood castings allow for an easy manoeuvrability and sharpening. We, we will see. So let's have a look inside. So it's on a hinged lid and inside the lid, which is awesome, so you're never going to lose it, you've got all the colour names and the codes that are on the pencil. And it looks like if these are in the, um, let me bring you in just so you can see that a little bit better. If these are in the order in the box, um, they're in a really good colour order. I like the way they're laid out. So let's have a look what we get inside. So inside, if we just move my trusty sharpeners, um, inside you've got a, a number of pamphlets. So you've got your coloured pencil tutorial in five easy stages. Oh, look. Oh, OK, so it's got the castle on the front and then it tells you how to do that castle. Wow. I wonder if you can, no, you, I presume you have to draw it. Well, whip, that's me out then. <laughs> castle Club, join the Castle Club today. A chance to win free art supplies, coupon details. Wow. OK, so they've got a club. I know they have Instagram. Colour and product guide. Now, the last time I got a colour and product guide was with my um, pastel pencils from, um, oh gosh, can't think of the name, but they had a colour mix. Oh, look, it's come back out. They had a colour mixing chart and we tried it in one of the colour alongs or colour with me's as I like to call them. Isn't that good? Pastel tint pencils. It might be it might be the castle art actually, pastel tint pencils. I think it probably is. But I'm thinking of. 
Look at that. So are they all the colours that we've got? Because they look delicious. Okay. So that's in that little chart with a little bit of information about it. Um, and the things that they do, watercolour pencils, woodless colour pencils, all sorts. So that's their supplies. Then we've got coloured pencils taking your art to the next level. They, they really do go all out. Look at this. That's their, their range. So techniques gallery, texturing techniques. I'm not going to go through it because you'd have to buy them to um, colour wheel. Wow, that's really good. I might have a little bit of light bedtime reading. Hey, folks. <laughs> okay. And we've got a colour swatch sheet, which is really helpful, which means I don't have to print my own, providing, let's see, it looks like they are in the order that's on the top of the tray. That's perfect. So it's a nice quality card, and it's got a pre-fold down there, so I could slip it into a pencil case if I'd got one. I've run out, folks. <laughs> so we'll put that to side one minute. Then we've got this nice plastic film over the top printed with castle arts to protect our pencils even further. Now, they are in the little plastic trays, but they have the elastic bits that help us pull them out, which is a really nice touch. So this is layer one. And then layer two. Oh, I'd love new pencils. It's so exciting. And then layer three. Oh, shh. They're so delicious. Okay, Lucy, calm. Calm now. Oh, they've got a really good smell to them too. Quite a strong smell, but it's nice. Okay, let's pick up a dark coloured pencil so you can see. So this is what they look like. You can get lots of these pencils online, these black ones, but this is stamped with Castle Arts Soft Touch. And then if we turn the barrel round, You've got the name there, which is Spice Red, and the code is 025. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now, let me, let me grab, um, let's see, let's, I've got a little pile here. I'm trying to find another budget pencil to put it next to. No, that's Polychromos. I should have thought of this beforehand. What's in this delicious little pencil case? Let's have a look. Ah, ah, no, no. <laughs> I've been sorting my office out and, um, oh goodness, I can't find a pencil to compare it to. But I tell you what, let's do a jelly roll pen. Now, if you've got jelly roll pens, you'll know. So the barrel, is about the same as a jelly roll pen. So that's a really good comparison there. Um, and obviously jelly roll gets wider, but so at the tip of the pencil, tip of the pen, it's about the same. I've got uh, a Prisma, a bit wider than a Prisma. And I've got a Derwent blender. And obviously Derwent are much more chunkier. But they're a really nice, manageable size. They're smooth. The printing is beautifully clear because it's on a black barrel with silver writing. So even with my rubbish eyesight, let's pick a really light one. Golden yellow 003. So even with, I don't know if think my light is helping. Even with my rubbish eyesight, I think I will be able to tell... Uh, read the pencils. So what I'm going to do is cut the cut the video here. I'm going to go off and sharpen all 120, and I'm going to use my Dahl 133 sharpener, little crank sharpener, absolutely incredible sharpeners. And then I will be back, and we will fill in our swatch sheet together. All right, my lovely friends. See you in a minute. Okay, folks, so 120 sharpened pencils. Don't they look good? So I wanted to show you how uniform this first layer is. There is a couple of things I want to point out to you because I didn't mention at the start. So just quickly, 
because the pencils have dipped ends, as I've shown you, this bit is covered, you can't see whether the cores are centered or not. And that can affect your pencil. So if we have a look at this tray, for example, that is nothing to do with the pencil breaking. That was a hand spasm and I cranked the sharpener. <laughs> One more turn. Anyway, so if I pick up the white pencil and show you, um, that looks great. And then if I come right up close and I start to turn it, can you see how more of the lead is exposed on one side? That means the core's slightly off center. Okay, I didn't really notice too many more um, and I had no further problems and no breakages whatsoever. So I'm gonna put them back in order and I'll tell you why. <laughs> you know that I've talked on my channel quite a few times about having dyslexic tendencies. Well, I started filming the video with their swatch sheet. Now, if I bring you in, um, we got the, I got this far filming it and I've had to scrap it because although it's lovely card and it's very nice, my brain will not do it. They are just not in number order. In the box, they have um, start with 001 and work the way right, right up to 120 in order. On this card, it doesn't and it's scrambled my brain. So what I've done is scrapped their card and I've printed off my, I've made my own little swatch chart. And I've literally, I started putting the codes in and then it dawned on me, they're all basically numbers one to 120. If I show you, look, we come in a bit closer. Um, and they've just got like zero, zero in front until you get into double figures and treble figures and whatnot. So we are gonna, I'm gonna start. I've messed that right up, haven't I? I'll have to colour over that. That code shouldn't be there. You're going to have to ignore that. Oh, my goodness. I thought um, I would get this video out to you, and it, they, they seemed really easy to colour with. Please ignore that. I am so sorry. Um, so, Primrose Yellow. I'll still be able, you'll still be able to see the colour. And then we go, um, yep. I don't even need to look. I've put them in order. I need to stop second guessing myself. Golden yellow. So I'm not going to read the codes out as well because they are, I've put them all in order. So they just run, skew my hand in your way. Um, cadmium yellow light. They just run in numerical order now so that's how they came in the box that's how i'm going to leave them because of my dyslexic tendencies so normally i would take a pencil and i would number them like i've done here on my chart and then i would put that number on a sticker around the top here just to help me find them i find it easier to find numbers than i do um words so now you can see proper swatching lemon yellow It's a good job I didn't carry on making that, wasn't it? Because it hadn't even occurred to me I hadn't left the space for my swatching. Anyway, we've we've um we've got there in the end. I'm not reprinting it. This is on my cardstock, which I use on um when I photocopy a page to do, which is in my wish list if you want to have a look, which is down in the description box. And um it's beautiful cardstock. It's not that expensive. It's quite, it is pricey, but it's not that expensive compared to some. So we're now coming into sort of orangey yellow. So we've got a really nice assortment of yellows there, which is quite unusual for a, oops, for a 120 set. Now, I can't guarantee that we won't meet more yellows along the way or that they, the colours won't be muddled. Um, it's just how the numbers were in the system. So I've left it like that for the reasons I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, I did get myself in a bit of a muddle. I was trying to trying to film for you and I thought, oh, this video will be about four hours long if I sit here trying to um, to find each of the 
colours that I'm doing. So I just made my little chart. I say made my little chart. That takes me forever because I have to read the names of the pencils, make sure that I've got the right number. And because, like I say about being having these dyslexic tendencies, it drives my brain silly. <laughs> uh, looks like it. Beautiful colours. Look at that. Terracotta. That's lovely, isn't it? I like that. So, yeah. So, I was saying on my uh, scrapped video, um, somebody in the comments, and I do read them all, even if I don't get round to um, answering every single one of them. Um, somebody asked me if I've got any tips for blending. Um I hope you can see the colours and the numbers. This is burnt ochre. So it's nice to chat to you while I'm swatching. Um, and I did do a video a while ago, um, maybe last year. The channel's three years old now, so maybe last year or the year before on how to blend. And one of the techniques that I used in that video is swatching. And the reason I say that is because a lot of the time I'll talk to you when we're colouring about fading out and um, that's to do with pressure. So like here, this is Orange Lake and I want to see its true intense colour. So I'll press quite hard there and then I'll lessen off and get lighter and lighter and lighter until there's nothing left. Now that would take forever if I did that on a swatching video, but... That's what I suggested that people do to help them practice getting pencil control so that they can vary the shade. I hope you can see that in that um, on that one, that with one pencil, you can get quite an array of colour just by changing the pressure. And then also, when I talk about them blending the next colour in, that's how I do it, by fading it out. So if we're going to put a lighter colour in there, I can then go over the faded out bit and bring that colour out. I hope that makes sense. But there is a video somewhere on my channel. Um, and it's, I think, blending for beginners or something like that. I don't know. You'd have to look through my... If you click on um, my channel and then videos, you'll have to scroll through them. I don't think... There'd be too, too many. Coral, that's a gorgeous colour. I like that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And then this is tangerine. I'll tell you what, because I've been gabbing on, wittering like I do, we haven't looked at the cores. But actually, I think they're fairly obvious when you pick them up if there's ones that are off centre. And these are really not that bad. So we're coming back up the top here to Venetian Red. Um, they are as soft and creamy as I remember. They are really nice pencils, actually. And if you're learning to colour, and you're just trying this hobby out, or you, you really enjoy colouring, but you don't have the budget, I've done a whole budget pencil series. Um... And what we've done is swatched the pencils. The only one I've swatched the pencils and then done a colour with me with them. The only one I haven't got round to yet colouring with is the feeler colour pencils. But my thoughts are that if you caught it, I did a flip through of RJ Hampson's new incredible colouring book. So my thoughts are because the lovely Gemma sent me these um, and I want to pay her back. For, for taking the time to do that for me, despite going through such a difficult time. Um, I want to do a colouring with, in RJ's book with these, and then we'll do the feeler in RJ's book, I'm thinking as well. What do you think? What are your thoughts, people? Those two look very similar on camera. I hope you can see that there is a tonal difference there. There definitely is. And that to have those like that is really nice because it really helps you to to blend out into lighter colours. They've got some really beautiful colours. Look at that. It's Chinese orange, that's called. It's really deep in that. I like that. 
<clears throat> this one's called a cherry. Ooh, folks, look at that. Yeah, they are soft. They're not scratchy. And I think uh, pounds sterling, they were 50 pounds for the set. And that's not budget budget like we've been looking at, is it? Like our Amazons that when I did the video, they were 12 pound. I think they've gone up by, you know, four or five pounds since then. I do like the Amazon pencils. So they're not budget budget, but I mean, if we're looking at in terms of these in comparison to Prismacolors or um, Faber-Castell Polychromos. <coughs> Excuse me. They are budget pencils. More budget friendly. And if you want... Um, oh, that's pretty. I'm a sucker for... And if you can see spelling mistakes, please, I'm just looking at this. Oh, no, that's right. It is right. I thought it was supposed to be like, I don't know. But no, it's right. <laughs> Please don't give me a hard time. I've just explained that I find it really difficult and doing words and numbers on a grid. Wow, mind blow. What was I going to say? I was saying that um, if you want that next level of pencil, once you've tried out the really cheap budget ones and colouring is a hobby that you are really enjoying, these are a great way to go. They are Really nice pencils. Yes, so we've got a lot of catching up to do um, because I've been on holiday with my son and grandson and my husband. And um, I will fill you in if I get a chance on our RJ page when we're doing some colouring. There's lots to tell. Also have a little bit of an accident at home. I'm okay. Got a bit of a fat blue foot, but I'm okay. It's not broken, I hope. Uh, oh, that's gorgeous. Look at those colours, people. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I had a bit of a fall. So I will explain that. Um, well, actually, I could now while we're, we're swatching. It is nice to talk about things. Um... Yeah, I um I missed like the last five steps, I think, five or six steps coming down. I don't know what happened. It's just like, you know, when you fall, it's like slow motion, isn't it? I knew it was coming and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, I um missed the step, missed my footing. Oh, gosh, that's gorgeous. Look at that dark purple. Oh, so we've got pink purples and blue purples. Really nice. Um, let me just do this one and then we'll change the tray. Oh, they're beautiful. Gosh, look at those. Oh, if I run down, look. Look at those yellows as well. They're gorgeous. Um, so that's tray one done. So what was I saying? Yeah, so I, um, yeah, missed the step and f like my foot went right underneath me. And um, I scraped my arm <laughs> and that's got a lovely blue bruise on it. I, because I'm on blood thinners as well, you bruise really badly. So at the moment, I have a very fat blue foot, both on the top and underneath. I can walk on it, but just on the side. I can't put like full pressure on a flat foot on it. I can't. I can't get a shoe on. Even like those of you that will know Crocs, I cannot wear Crocs. Can't get that on. I'm just looking. I hope you can see the colour difference in those as well on camera. I have brought a new LED light that's shining away to the side of me and hope it's combating shadow and giving us sort of... Oh, there's a little bit of off-centre core. Not too bad at all. I've seen very expensive posh pencils more off center than these so not bad at all they're very similar in tone those ones those blues but let's put indigo light next to it and you should see the difference then 
which I can now. That's a very bright blue. This is more grey. There is different. I hope you can see them. It's very hard on my little lens to tell what you can see until I get it up to edit. I don't know what I was saying. Oh, yeah, I couldn't get my sh shoes on, couldn't get my crock on. So I haven't been able to go anywhere or do anything. The trials and tribulations of being a Lucy. It's all good fun, folks. It really is. Right, what I'm looking for is a really pale blue. Are we going to get one? That's nice. That's a beautiful blue. Look at that. I like that. Now, I do know, I think, if I say, yes, there's more blues on the bottom tray. So I don't know why they've done it like that, but it is what it is. Um, and if I can select the right pencils quickly, then I'm happy. So I don't mind if... They're not all next to each other. Oh, look at those two. In those three, you could go from this phalo green into that cobalt turquoise look in a blend. That would be nice. Um, so the holiday, oh, we had, had such a lovely time. It was amazing. The little fella was just, oh, he was adorable, of course. Um, hard work because he's uh, he was six on his on um, while he was there on his birthday, um, but because they're full of energy, aren't they? At that age, anyway. But he does have autism. I know I keep going on about it, but it is important, and it does change the way that um, you can interact and the way that you do things. So um, on his birthday, he chose to go to the zoo. Of course. So we took him to Nuki Zoo and that was going to be his birthday out. Well, in the morning, um, obviously he'd had his presents and, you know, you make a fuss of them like you do. And he, his nana, as he calls me, nana and granddad had brought him a couple of Lego sets. He loves his Lego and just loves building them. So I brought a dinosaur one and I brought a, um, a farm set. Because me and him had been building zoos and farms and things like that with this big box of Lego that he'd got before he had any sort of proper sets and playing like that. Oh, well, God, he was so excited. Bless his little heart. So we're wandering around the zoo and you have to imagine that this little fella's, um, his mind is very fixated on the things he knows and the things he wants. He's, he's very, um, yeah, very fixated is a good word. Um, and, and you find that a lot with people with autism. And um, so we're wandering around. We've been there about half an hour. <laughs> oh, God, I've got to laugh. And he's got his Nana's hand because it's all about the Nana. No, Nana do it. No, no, Nana do it. I'm, I miss Nana. I want Nana, um, which is lovely. But um, so we're wandering around. I'm, he's holding my hand and we're looking. I'm saying, oh, look, can you see the monkeys? And they were like little capuchin monkeys so they were really cute um you know um very exciting to look at and he turns to his nana and he says nana I said yes little fella i'm not going to say his name on camera um oh that's pretty yes little fella and uh, we've got all this excitement going on and children you know leaping with glee at these little animals and he says i can't wait to go home and play with my lego can we go home now so we'd literally been there, I don't know, <laughs> 30 minutes and he was ready to go back to the caravan and play Lego. Uh, and that just about really sort of sums it up with the way he, you know, he thinks about things. And that's not him being rude. That was just, he's just so upfront with you and honest, which is very refreshing and lovely. So... We did go around the entire zoo. We didn't give up. We said, you know, no, we've got to go and see all the animals. And we made it as fun as we could for him. And he was very good. And he did enjoy it. He took a few photos on my phone and, you know. And um, then, of course, we come to the penguins, which was hilarious. We get to the penguins and there's a exactly the same size as the little fella, a Lego penguin that's been built. 
happens, of course, he has to go over to that. He's not interested in the penguins whatsoever, but the Lego penguin. So we've got a few snaps of him stood with the Lego penguin. And then, um, yeah, so we, we go home and I build the help him build the Lego sets and he plays with those. And then um, I brought, um, bought, sorry, excuse my pronunciation. I did get told off for that once. Um, a a small football, sort of catching size football, because um, he does have some delay in his in certain developments. So coordination he's not very good with. And so I brought a small football and um, some a massive bubble wand. So me and him went out and did a bubble wand. And then him and Grandad went out and started to play football. Well, that then developed into Let's Play Catch. Um, he's really uncoordinated and he will walk away from things way too quick rather than um, trying if he's no good at it. Well, honestly, this little fella was absolutely awesome at his catching and his throwing. So, right, we've got white here. What I'm going to do is leave the white. I'll leave it out and I'm going to get a black. I'm going to get a black a hoo hoo marker. Just uh, one of these. And I'm going to lift it up so it doesn't go through. And I'm just going to. I'm just going to black out this little. That's why I like to do it on two separate pages. I'm just going to black out this line. There we go. Nice and neat. And then we'll come back to that. That'll be dry and we can test our white pencil. So I'll leave it out and we'll come back to it. Only fair. I do it with all the other pencils. So, um, yeah, so absolutely. Oh, darn it. That's what happens when I'm chitter chattering. That's not titanium white, folk. <laughs> this is Naples yellow light. <laughs> yeah, so we had an, an absolutely fabulous time. He went swimming and learned to swim with his granddad. Nana didn't take him because Nana forgot her swimming costume. All very convenient, folks. <laughs> um, yeah, so he went swimming with his granddad, learned to swim. Doggy paddle, you know, we weren't like front crawl by the end of the week or anything, but it's huge steps, isn't it? Oh, so we had a whale of a time. And then on the third time of swimming with Grandad in the evening, they went later because the pool was emptier. Um, and so you can concentrate more. He came out full of the joys like they do. And, Jay and um, he nearly said his name then he flaps his hands and tiptoes and goes in circles when he gets excited and he slipped in the shower and landed straight on the bottom of his chin which split his chin open so um so the last few days the weather changed and it was raining and um we kind of we, we brought some board games we did board games and uh playing catch and you know, reading books, just doing nice nana and granddad things with him. And it was just incredible. I hope you don't mind me waffling on about the holiday, but I know people will want to know how we got on. So <clears throat> it was only a week, but wow. So anyway, right, we've done. We look at those blues and greens, man. Wow. And then we go into the greens here and there's some more yellowy oranges. That Naples yellow light would be a perfect Caucasian skin tone like that. Where was the peach anyway, folks, before we move on? I know we did peach there. It's not very peachy, is it? The coral, uh, the tangerine and the coral might be good. Venetian red would be good for skin. Okay, let's move on to my second little sheet, and we're on the last tray. So, let's do a little bit more focus on the pencils now. I've done my, my bit of catch-up with you. So, we're going into some more pinks now. I told you they probably wouldn't make much sense. 
Um, but I will put them up and we'll compare them at the end. So we can see. I haven't come across any scratchiness at all, any resistance, not wanting to lay down properly. Um, ooh, I've got a bit of a broken lead there. Look. I don't know. There. See it? So it might snap off. Just a warning if that triggers you. There we go. Let's give that a brush off. This one is called Bengal Rose. That's an interesting name, isn't it? I don't know if you've been looking, you'll have seen all the names. And I've gone through them, obviously putting them through into my computer to print this off. There's some really nice names. You certainly know, like with Bengal, these Bengal Rose, um, that it's the Castle Arts set we use. And I don't know of any other pencils that have got that name for these sort of pinky reds. Oops, sorry. Magenta. Ooh, that was very soft and squishy, that pencil. Really nice. You get that, don't you, in sets? You get certain colours that are much more squishy than others. I usually find, in in my opinion, that the yellows and oranges are soft and squishy and the blues can be a bit temperamental. That's what I find. So it'd be interesting to see. I didn't find that when I was watching those blues. Oh, come on. What? Hands, come on. I can't get it out. <laughs> Ah, oh. see the trials and tribulations of Lucy. I should do a vlog, shouldn't I? Just on what goes wrong, really, because there's plenty in my day. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, um. Crimson looks really bright on camera. Looks really pretty colour. Cornflower blue. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. I'm still searching for that light blue. Well, this one's supposed to be mauve. So let's see. I'll tell you what we haven't done. We haven't checked the dipped end against the colour that actually lays down, have we? No, that was not too bad at all. Cobalt blue light. We can try with some of these. Let's have a go with some of these and see if they how they match the ends, which is why I always recommend you swatch your pencils. See? Not bad, but not the colour you're getting. So, yeah, I would always... Or I, I'm a sucker for swatching. I love new pencil sets and swatching them. Um... But I would always recommend that you swatch your pencils if to help you select the colours that go together. Cobalt blue, isn't that pretty? Really nice. This one's intense blue. That's gorgeous. Sort of a turquoisey blue. I like that one. Okay, and primary blue. Yep, I'll go with that. That's a really pretty colour. Look at those blues. They're gorgeous. Those blues and purples. Love that. And we've still got some a couple more blues. Look. Um, cerulean middle blue. Or, or blue middle, even. Okay. And then we've got Cerulean Blue. Let me just, because I shall get excited and lose you. Cerulean Blue. See, those two will go beautifully together on a blend. Really nice. Cobalt a Turquoise a Green. Keep the paper still, Lucy, for goodness sake. Oh, nice. 
right. I love these tearly type turquoisey greens. They're just gorgeous. That's beautiful. And then phalo turquoise. Again. That's very green compared to that one, isn't it? Cypress green. Which is a blue. <laughs> Well, it has got green in it, look. It's like a peacock. It's like a peacock blue. We'll let them off. And then Terra Verde Deep. Ooh. That is a very unusual colour. Look at that. It's like a smoky blue. That's gorgeous. Teal green. My hands are packing up on me, folks. Oh, yes, I can't believe I forgot to tell you. Two other bits of news, Jade Green. Um, Firstly, I managed to get a new chair. Yes, I did. My other one completely gave up the ghost. This video would have been out, well, if it hadn't been for my fat foot. <laughs> <laughs> um, the lovely Gemma sent these pencils to me well, two days ago I think now and I wanted to do it straight away but um, my chair was so broken it wouldn't stay up at all so it was like my grandson could have sat on it and you know had hours of fun on it um, so the hydraulics had gone on it it had bent so it was squeaking you'll know if you've been following me it was driving me bananas um so i did i've got a lovely really lovely and i managed to get it i got it from amazon and it's faux leather in a like a, a smoky gray color and it's all cush cushy and lovely and it reclines and but i i got it i was looking at them and i got um a massive discount voucher off money off i mean like nearly 20 pound or something i got off um so i looked on argos and i was looking at all sorts of different places to get a you know a heavy duty office chair one that is actually used as an office chair because i spend hours up here and the little ones that i've been buying um just don't cut it they, they're just not made for that many hours of use and um and fat bottoms <laughs> so um we're gonna come in some more browns now good so yes yeah, so i've got this lovely luxurious office chair so no more squeaks and no more moaning about an uncomfortable bottom and whatever and then the ah, oh, it cracked look can you see yeah oh dear and then the other bit of news is um a hoo hoo reached out to me little old me and oh, i was so excited we were actually away on holiday when i got the email from a hoo hoo just get rid of that before i transfer it everywhere asking me if i would test out their honolulu range of alcohol markers so i was like no way yes of course i will so they arrived yesterday so now i'll be on a mad dash to catch up with all the videos that I need to do. Now I've got a chair that I can sit at without it hurting my fat foot. <laughs> and please don't worry, folks, if I'm concerned at all. Yes, I will go to the doctors or the GP or go down and get an x-ray done if necessary. But because I can walk on it, I've left it because I hate doctors and hospitals and I put it off. Can't bear it. So, but please don't worry. I will get it sorted if I need to. So there was two other bits of exciting news. It's all kicking off here, folks. <laughs> My exciting life. Okay. That warm grey light. It's a nice warm one. Okay, we will come out and have a look at them all. Now we've got to test our white. So that's now dry. Are you ready, folks? This is the big test. How does the titanium white perform? 
Well, it would help if it wasn't break, if it didn't crumble on me. Let's see. That is not half bad, you know. Look at that. What I am going to do, and I know people moan at me, but I am going to test it, if I can, yeah, against my white Prisma. Now, this is supposed to be one of the best opaque whites that you can use, apart from Holbein, obviously. But um, So we're going to test that against that. And let's see. Okay, so what do you think? Go back over that. Yeah, I know I've gone over it a lot more, but this is a budget pencil. What do you think? Yes, that is whiter, but is it enough to justify the price? I I don't think so. So let's give that a tick. It shows up, it works, it's opaque. Got a thumbs up from me, folks. Okay. Right, now if I can get these in order like this. Oh, we come out and have a look. Let's come out and see. There are our array of colours. Look at those. So I make my swatch sheets as small as I possibly can so that I can still read the writing. But um, I can I can fit them in a pencil case. If I have a pencil case, don't. But um, fit them in a pencil case, I can keep them together. So it doesn't matter to me that it's jumbled up. Like, I can move them around, put the greens around that, you know, I can move them side by side if I needed to. But I actually don't think, although this one's a little bit off-centre, that second one, isn't it? Um, that I need to. Look at those colours. Wow, look at that. Mulberry is gorgeous. Aren't they pretty? Okay, and these down here, look at these earthy tones they've put all together. That grenadine, pink is beautiful. They're all beautiful. I love all those colours there. We've got some beautiful, true, rich browns. And the grey selection is not great. There's not that many, but we do. what we do have is one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got a selection of, I would say, three of each warm grey, being charcoal, warm grey light, and... Davies Grey being the warm greys. And then we've got Payne's Grey, Cool Grey and Deep Grey. Cool Grey Deep, yeah. So you've got three of each. So they make a really good blend. So I am really pleased with these. And I'm going to go off. And for my lovely friend Gemma, I'm going to use them in RJ Hampson's book. And I can't wait. His book is awesome. Absolutely incredible. I'm really, really excited about colouring in it. Um, so I want to send a massive thank you to Gemma for being an incredible person. Gemma, keep fighting, darling. You're doing incredible. Um, let me just put these all back like this so you can see. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, my hands have given up the ghost. <laughs> Okay, so let me put the lid down and bring you back over. So there we are, the 120 delicious colours that Castle Arts have to offer in their set. Isn't that incredible? So thank you so much for following along with me. I hope if you're pleased and um, excited about doing RJ, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. And all the comments that you send, even if I don't answer, I read every single one of them. And if you put a comment down there, it really helps my channel out. It's free. It You, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. It And it really helps push my videos out to other people. Um, I don't very often plug the channel like that, but um, I really want to know people's opinions. Are you, are you happy for... Um, the RJ book, because I know I am. I can't wait. Anyway, I'll stop babbling on and I'll let you go. So until we meet again for oh, colouring in RJ's book, take really good care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Night, night.